Hello everyone and welcome. What happens when you run over a large piece of metal in your Tesla? Well, that's what we're gonna be discussing in this video as well as some of the other service issues and items I've had with this car over the nearly four years that I have owned it. Now, a portion of this video is sponsored by ClickUp. There's a link and discount code in the video description. We'll get into that later on in the video. So what happened? Well, I was driving on the highway, I'm in the leftmost lane and I'm passing a semi truck which is on my right. To my left is a barricade for the highway divide. So in front of me is a car and a metal bucket spits out from under it. And I basically got two options at this point, slam on the brakes, which didn't seem like a great idea to do on the highway unless you absolutely have to, or straddle this metal bucket and hope for the best. So that's what I did. So the metal bucket passed underneath the car, made some loud noises as it worked its way to the back where there was kind of a crack and then it spit out and became a problem for the car behind me. So as you can see, there's some tears in the front belly pan. Didn't seem like a huge deal. And then there's some long streaks coming down the battery pack. So we'll get into that in a second. Then as it spits out back here, that bucket hit this rear suspension and it cracked this rear suspension cover. So this is an aerodynamic piece as part of the rear suspension assembly. So here is the part that needed to be replaced. And so I looked in the Tesla parts catalog found the part number and then I found this part brand new on eBay for 60 bucks. So one bolt, 60 bucks seemed super easy uh, to replace myself. However, I am a curious individual and I was really curious, you know, if someone didn't take the time to do this themselves and jack the car up and replace it and they went to a Tesla service center, how much would they be charged for this? Uh, so I reached out to my local service center. Initially, they denied uh, doing anything with it. They said that I needed to take it to a collision center. And I was like, well, it seems like it's just one part. Can you not just replace one part at the service center? And so they agreed to take it in. And here is my invoice from the service visit. And the part cost $3.30 and the labor was $8.25. So it was less than $12 to get this thing replaced, which was significantly cheaper than I could have even done it on my own, which was a bit baffling to me. I even asked the service manager about this. I was like, y'all aren't making any money doing this. Like, why are you doing it? And they were like, well, Tesla sets the pricing. We just plug in what the service job is and it tells us how much to charge. Uh, and so that's what it ended up being, $11.55. So that was pretty wild to me that it was cheaper to go to a service center than just do it on my own. Now, the other reason I wanted to take this into a service center was to have them look at the battery and just verify that everything was fine. You've heard horror stories about batteries uh, and I just wanted to make sure that kind of thing didn't happen to me. So, you know, these things have thick metal protection underneath. I don't really think there's a huge reason to be concerned, but if something were to happen down the line, I wanted to be able to say, hey, I took it into a service center, I had this looked at and y'all said it was all good. So they said they found markings underneath the vehicle from the object that caused damage no major damage or anything else noted that require repairing or attention. That gives me peace of mind that I don't have to worry about any battery damage. All right, so the famous words among car enthusiasts while we're in there. So Tesla looked at a few other things while it was at the service shop. Uh, the first one being these upper ball joints on the front control arms. They reseal these with urethane. Apparently some noise can come from these, so this is covered under warranty, though I had not noticed any noise from mine. Another item they looked at on both sides of the car behind the rear suspension, there's a wire harness connection, and if the electrical insulation on those wires gets damaged, it can cause a short and it can actually prevent the car from starting. So you can remove uh, several of these little pins that are holding in this fender cover, and as you pull this forward, uh, you can get access to the wire harness. And so if you look behind this cover, here you can see the wire connection at the rear. And these are the wire insulation that you wanna inspect and just make sure none of these were damaged. So they did that on both sides and everything looked good. 
All right, next we get to the spoiler, and this has just been a reoccurring problem for me, so I've decided to just take it off and not deal with it. So Tesla says, if I want this thing to stick really well, I need to peel back the paint protective film that is on my car and then have it adhere directly to the paint. The issue was I was delivered the car without a spoiler, even though it was supposed to come with one. So when I took delivery of the car, I immediately had paint protective film put on it, which is the best time to do it. And then later they came and installed the carbon fiber spoiler, which didn't stick the first time and then came off once they reinstalled it a second time. So the thing is with this, I mean, this spoiler, if it doesn't fit exactly perfectly, these corners here, they're rigid, right? And so you have to kind of push them in in order to get it to stick with this double-sided tape and then eventually because it's carbon fiber and it's very rigid it just kind of wants to pull itself back and so these corners end up lifting off so I'm going to keep this part it still has the tape on it and if I ever do end up selling this car whoever has it next they can decide whether or not they want to put it on. So of the first five service items that Tesla looked at on my car, the only thing they were charging me for was this part and installing it, uh, this thing being comically cheap at $3.30. Now I mentioned ClickUp at the beginning and this brief portion of the video is sponsored. ClickUp is a productivity platform. Whether you're a creator or work in engineering or sales or marketing, generally speaking, we all have a bunch of things on our to-do lists that require many different platforms to get things done. ClickUp is a tool that can house all of these tasks, projects, documents, spreadsheets, and so on, and so it's designed to keep everything organized and all in one place. It's also flexible based on the size of your team or company, whether you're solo or working with over a thousand teammates. You can create lists to track progress, incorporate documents shared between users, and they even have a whiteboard function. If you've seen this channel, you know I've got a soft spot for whiteboards. It's free to sign up for personal use at clickup.com. You can find a link in the video description. And if you use my coupon code engineering, you can get 15% off the unlimited plan for a year. All right, so next up, my air conditioning smelled terrible. So Tesla replaced the two cabin air filters and they cleaned the evaporator uh, and it cost $125. And what I like about this is that they simply charged $50 in parts. And it's pretty much gonna cost you $50 in parts whether you do it yourself or you take it into the service center. And then it's whether or not you wanna spend the 75 bucks to have someone replace it for you. Uh, and I wouldn't say, you know, it's necessarily the most difficult task, uh, but considering that this this is a service item you know that you need to regularly replace I had mine replaced at three years uh, you know it is going to be a bit more difficult than you might assume just for replacing a cabin air filter so it's kind of buried away up in here uh, and there's a screw that's kind of difficult to access but it can be done it's just whether or not you want to spend that $75 again what I like about it is that they're not overcharging you on the filters here and so I've gone into car dealerships for different cars that I've had and they've been like hey do you want to replace this dirty cabin air filter we've got right here uh, we can do it for you know $60 for this part and it's like, I can walk over to the parts department and buy that filter from you for $15 right now. So why would I pay you four times that at the same location? Like that's kind of crazy, right? So I like that they're not playing games here. You know, pretty much you're gonna spend $17 on one of these filters, whether you're buying it on the internet uh, or whether you're buying it directly from Tesla. All right, so the final thing, my steering column was the one real rattle that I had in my car. And I was always trying to figure out how can I get rid of this rattle. Uh, I saw that Tesla service centers could actually take care of this. So I had them try that out and they put some felt tape on this top trim piece and they charged $82.50 in labor in order to do so. Now it didn't really fix anything. I still had rattles coming from it. So what I did is I just put this elastic strap around it, uh, which cost $3 on Amazon. Amazon and I have not had rattles since so unfortunately uh, you know it's not quite sightly but I can't actually see it from my driving position and it's a three dollar fix and I don't have to listen to rattles so I'm happy with it um, it is a little disappointing that the Tesla fix didn't actually work uh, so you know eighty two dollars and fifty cents uh, not worth spending in my opinion so if I add up everything I have spent on service for the nearly four years that I've owned this Tesla Model 3 Performance, it's actually a pretty high number. 
but the majority of that is from hitting a pothole and destroying two wheels. So if I take out things uh, that I was the ultimate cause of or service items which were optional, really the only thing that had to be done was those cabin air filters being replaced, which again was $125. So for $125 to be the total amount necessary to spend on service for this car for four years, I think that's pretty dang good. Now again, as I've owned this thing for about four years now, I thought it'd be useful to go through some of the best and worst attributes of this vehicle. The biggest plus is that this is a genuine sports sedan, and it's a good one. It's hard to point to a direct competitor. From a pricing standpoint, it's still in a bit of a league of its own. Might you have more fun in a well-equipped Porsche Taycan? Yeah, you probably will, but you'll also spend three times as much. People say these cars are heavy, and they are, but people also assume this means these things can't handle a corner, and that's simply not true. This thing is genuinely a great handling vehicle, and that is coming from someone who has owned and enjoyed S2000s and Miatas. I really like lightweight sports cars, uh, and I'm not saying that that's how they feel. This thing does not feel like a Miata or S2000, but it can handle well, and it's genuinely fun to drive. People also say the acceleration gets old, that it's a one-trick car. And to me, like, this is such a silly statement because, first of all, it's like always useful to have acceleration if you want it slash need it. It's like, if it's there, it's good to have access to it. And second of all, it's like, it doesn't get old to me uh, having good acceleration. It's like, if I didn't want a car that was silly and fun, why would I buy a car that's silly and fun? Like, we buy sports cars because we like doing dumb things, like flooring it. And so it's like, yeah, it's still fun if you think that kind of thing is fun. I also don't think people fully appreciate just how insanely quick this thing is. A more meaningful test, rather than 0 to 60 time, is a 5 to 60 time. With a 5 to 60, you're not using launch control, so it's more realistic of like everyday driving. A 5 to 60 represents punching the throttle and seeing what happens. In combustion cars, this means waiting for transmissions to downshift and turbochargers to spool up. These sorts of things take time. Okay, take for example the Bugatti Chiron Super Sport's nearly 1600 horsepower versus this which is at about 500 horsepower. They have nearly identical 5 to 60 times. In the real world, these cars are basically equally quick at legal speeds. The Tesla's even just slightly quicker than a Ferrari 488 or a Lamborghini Huracan from 5 to 60. These cars shouldn't be in the same conversation, but from an acceleration standpoint, they are. The Tesla punches way, way above its price tag in acceleration. That's undeniable. It also has plenty of convenient and useful features. The navigation is great, the voice control works really well, sentry mode, camp mode, the dash cam, the phone app, the charging experience. There's a lot to like. Truthfully, I never planned on owning this car so long. I was planning to change it out for a different EV and just try different EVs out there. But of the current EVs around this price tag, there's nothing that's convinced me to switch. Now, that's certainly not to say it's perfect. There's plenty to be frustrated with. I still don't get why so much of the screen has to be wasted by an animation of the car that I'm driving. I'd much prefer to be able to full screen the map like you can do in the Model S and X. The rain sensing wipers are frustrating. Uh, so all the controls are done through the screen, right? So that alone is frustrating. But if the automatic wipers actually worked well, that wouldn't be a huge deal. Well, they don't. They don't work great at night. They don't work great in really light rain. They don't work great in really heavy rain. It's honestly hard to think of scenarios where the rain sensing wipers actually work well. And when you put the car in reverse and it's raining, the wipers go crazy and it's like, what are you doing? I'm not even looking that direction. And I know this isn't an impossible task because I've driven plenty of cars that nail automatic rain sensing wipers. Other issues with this infotainment screen and system, their version of the Spotify app is a bit frustrating. It doesn't give you all of the options that exist on desktop or mobile. The cameras remain a bit glitchy. Sometimes you just get a black screen when you're backing up. I really like that you can have the camera show you your blind spot when changing lanes, but they don't always load. 
Another frustrating point is that Tesla just seems to consistently overpromise and underdeliver when it comes to range. This thing is claimed to have, you know, 310 miles of range. And even when it was brand new, that was not the case. Now, I have not noticed much degradation in the battery. It still has consistent range uh, as when I bought it, you know, more than 30,000 miles ago. But the range was never anywhere close to 310. I mean, realistically, you can probably consistently get about 70% of that. Now, I don't have full self-driving. However, I do feel for the people who have spent $12,000 for full self-driving, uh, a feature which is arguably deceptively marketed, and every year they say it's gonna be ready, and then every year it's not ready, and another year goes by and they say it'll be ready, and it's not ready, and this cycle just continues, and you've spent money for something, then you end up switching cars, and you can't even transfer that over. So it's like all of this money is spent on something that you've been promised, and you don't actually get. Again, the best advice is don't pay for something until you're happy with it exactly how it is in that moment. Now, personally, I didn't buy this car for it to drive me around. I still don't even have basic autopilot. It's a fantastic daily driver. And probably the most surprising thing to me is that even though this thing is four years old, it's still very relevant. Even stranger that it has so few actual competitive products in the market. There's a healthy number of crossovers entering the market from the competition, but sports sedans are still rare. Overall, yeah, it's just a really good daily driver. Thank you all so much for watching. Again, there is a link to click up in the video description and you can use the discount code engineering. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.